All right. Thanks so much, Lisa. Thank you, everybody, for signing on on your, well, I guess now Tuesday evening. I know it's uh, later here on the East Coast. For those of you on the West Coast, hope you're having a good uh, post-work afternoon. Uh, I am a practicing periodontist here in the city of Boston. I've uh, been here for a while. Uh, teach perio at Harvard and, uh, as Lisa mentioned, very proudly a member of the Catapult Speakers Bureau. And really excited to talk everybody uh, with everybody tonight about this really important and overlooked topic of maximizing uh, patient acceptance. So there's a lot of new technology and software platforms uh, that we really didn't have at our disposal before that I'm happy to share with everybody. Now, as mentioned, this is a quick hour lecture. This is a topic I've done for over a uh, three hour uh, period course. Uh, so we've got quite a bit of information. I'm gonna try and hit the biggest highlights for everybody to get it all in that one hour time. So uh, part of me as I go through this to, to get everything and as much information as possible. And again, I'll spend some time at the end answering as many questions as you might need. Again, a special thanks, as mentioned, uh, to the sponsors. They've got some great solutions for us, and I'm going to be highlighting uh, each of them along with some other groups. So I want to thank PeriProtect, Pearl, Prexion, and Cloud Dentistry for making this happen. So the overall uh, overview for our topic tonight is really, uh, you know, taking care of this primary challenge, which is patient acceptance of treatment. Now, there's really kind of two different angles that it's coming from, one from the patient side and number two from the practice side. Now, the patient side, there are some things uh, that are, uh, you know, at our ability to deal with and, and, and manage to help make things more uh, successful. But it's really from the practice side that we start to see new solutions and innovations that, again, I'm happy to share with everybody. So we're going to go through both of these different sides and hopefully combining them together, have a better understanding and some better ideas of how we can do a better job uh, of increasing our patient acceptance. So without further ado, we'll jump right in. Uh, we'll start first with the patient factors. Now, the first few are ones that I think everybody's aware of. Obviously, the biggest uh, burden and primary kind of thing holding patients up is their anxiety. And of course, we all know the stats. Uh, you can look at these across the board. Those numbers, of course, are through the roof. People, of course, are very anxious to come uh, and be treated by dental professionals. I'm sure the Steve Martin movie didn't help from many years ago, uh, and everybody has different ranges of experience that have uh, contributed to that. Now, when you look at some of the other literature that's out there, look at this study from the Journal of American Dentistry. It, it showed that the fear of coming to the dentist is basically on the same scale as fear of snakes. So really, we, we have this big kind of initial burden before we've ever even seen the patient where because of what we do in our profession, we're already kind of swimming uphill, right? If our own patients are anxious to see us before they've even met us, well, that is going to make our life that much harder. However, the real factor that makes a huge difference is that dentist-patient relationship. And it's been found through numerous different studies that not only you can see from CAR that one out of three patients find dental professionals to be overall dishonest and opportunist. And really the big uh, by Jacot article, what they found is that the real elements of trust in that patient-dentist uh, relationship comes for an assurance of confidentiality and really feeling, and again, it's about a feeling about that relationship that things are being done with their best interest in mind and with patient autonomy. So looking at Chapel and Halpern studies, we can find that overall uh, confidence for patients have with our integrity really comes down to how they're involved with the overall treatment planning process. And the more confidence they have in us as individuals, the more trust they have in us as individuals, the more likely they are to assume a more passive role and really put the ball more in our court and give us uh, our own autonomy. At the end of the day, the more that we can personally relate to our patients, whether it's cultural or ethnic backgrounds or build that kind of uh, personal rapport with the patient, that is going to build that significant level of trust. So like I said, patient involvement in the decision-making process is really their primary factor for having confidence. Once they see that we have their best interest at heart, and once they see that we're looking out for them, then they're more likely to take off uh, and have a more passive role. Therefore, if this was this conversation going back decades ago, where it was more of a paternalistic model, where it was, hey, I'm the doctor, you're the patient, 
I'm here, this is, I'm going to tell you how it's going to be, and you're going to follow it. That model simply doesn't seem to have the same level of success anymore. It's more about including the patient in the patient, uh, in the overall treatment planning process, gaining their confidence. And once they have that, they will then have that comfort in saying, okay, I have trust in you. I'm more likely to take a more passive role and kind of let you lead the show. So it's something that we should not overlook. Another one that, of course, our patients always complain about, which leads to problems, is time. As we all know, patients want their work completed yesterday, but it's not that simple, is it? We all know we've got a lot of different prep work to do. There's a lot of lab work involved. In many cases, uh, cases especially for me as a periodontist, I have to put patients in provisional appliances for long periods of time. Uh, looking at uh, kind of some more daily cases that I treat, we've got typical teeth that have to be removed and grafted to go along through the implant process. And you can see that that process at a minimum can take six to 10 months. And now we start adding more layers to it with issues like soft and hard tissue augmentation. And we're looking at cases that sometimes even for a single tooth can take over one year. So the time factor itself plays a huge role. And of course, knowing that our patients wanted their work done yesterday adds to the overall complication. And a lot of times when we discuss these cases and give patients a little bit of an idea of how long things take, we oftentimes have patients unwilling to move forward simply because how long the time process takes. Now, the other big elephant in the room that we all know is this issue of insurance. What is going to be done about the paying uh, issue of things? So we're gonna present two brand new payment finance solutions at the end of the course. But in terms of the insurance problem, we wanted to point out the obvious that basically dental treatment is not cheap. In fact, you can see from this dental product report, very odd to find that 80% of patients were even open to the consideration of no local anesthesia, just if it reduced their bill. So this is how big this patient uh, payment process is playing a role. And as we all know, insurance, unfortunately, is dictating the show. Patients don't even want to know what the treatment's going to cost or what it might involve. All they ask you first and second and last is, will my insurance cover this procedure? Yes or no? Well, as you can also see, depending on what type of a plan you have and depending on where in the country you live, the overall uh, premiums that are provided and the average cost for them actually vary quite a bit. So even though the vast majority of the patient has dental insurance, depending where you are geographically through the country, you can actually uh, make a big difference in terms of the amount of benefits that you're getting. But regardless of what that number is, we all know that that number is far too little. Doing a single crown, an implant, an extraction, a, a crown lengthening, or any type of you know more standard dental treatment already maxes the patient out. We all know those clauses that exist that deny them from even having coverage in the first place. And as we all know, and I see it on a daily and weekly basis, there are a lot of patients who despite having big infections or decay or whatever it might be, will literally prolong their treatment until the new calendar year just because of their insurance. So it is a big elephant in the room that we have to consider, but not necessarily all in our control. However, if we start changing gears and start looking away just from the patient side and looking at what goes on in our actual practice, that's where we have, excuse the pun, where we really have everything in our own hands. Every one of these factors will be something that we as individuals and we as a dental office and as a team can actually deal with. And the first one I'm going to mention before we get into more of the clinical ones is one that I think is really overlooked, and it has to do with the HR nightmare. As we all know, since COVID, we've had a much uh, more difficult time uh, in having consistent levels of staffing, whether it's front desk, hygiene, associates, whoever it might be. The sheer amount of turnover that we've all experienced in our practices has been through the roof and our ability to successfully bring on new team members that are actually dedicated, want to stay for the long term, uh, and have really good training has been more and more difficult. But before we even get into that, we're going to mention the first part of things that is so overlooked. And that is when patients call, as you can see from dental uh, economics, 87% of new patients that call our office to come for treatment are either put directly on a voicemail, on hold, or they're not ever greeted or called back. 
Think about that, 87%. In fact, when you look at the average dental practice across this country, the average response rate for all calls across the board is about 80%. Whereas the top 10 dental practices across the country are actually responding to 95% of the calls. So what that means for us is that the difference between the average dental office and the elite dental uh, practice that is having the most success is only 15%. That 15% takes you from being in the average to being in that upper echelon. So our biggest problem is we're worried about all of our solutions in the clinic which we're gonna provide some solutions to. But our first problem is we gotta actually pick up the phone and 80%, 87% of the time when a new patient calls, we're not being successful in doing that. And of course, as a result of that, it results in a loss of patient uh, confidence in our office. We lose the referrals, which of course goes down that rapid hole of revenue. So what we really have to think about is that in the long term, that leads to a huge amount of practice loss and overall revenue. Again, we're talking about ways of having increased production, but the most important long-term complications that happen due to this high turnover that we're seeing is that we just discussed how important that patient trust is with not only their doctor, but their staff. And I can't tell you enough in practices that I have been working in how so much of the treatment that I uh, actually suggest gets sold by my assistant before I ever step into the room. It's sold by the hygienist that they have a relationship with for years. So we all can identify with this directly. So the more turnover that we have in our staff, the more every time they come in, they have to see a brand new face and start over again, trying to build up that trust barrier that of course is going to be a huge barrier in gaining patient confidence and being able to increase our overall productivity. So since COVID, we all know this problem has been at an all time high. Uh, we should stop going through these traditional processes of going online and trying to go through Indeed uh, and trying to find new employees. We've seen how difficult that is. So one new way forward that I'm very happy to share with everybody is a new company known as Cloud Dentistry. And they provide for all of us solutions, not only for front desk, hygiene and assistance, but even for associate uh, doctors looking for work. So what Cloud Dentistry ends up doing is that for a very low fee, they actually end up helping you be able to build and find a team for whatever need you might be looking for. So like we mentioned, and we're gonna show you the platform and how it works, not only will they help you find whatever aspect and team member you're looking for, but you'll be able to use their platform to learn everything about them. And that's what's so important. So many of the ads we put out, we get a simple response. We're paying per ad that we put out, per response that we're getting. We don't know anything about that individual's background, their experience, where else they've worked, what the feedback is from those places. And that is something that cloud is providing for us. We get a day-to-day -day response. We are able to set up our own profiles and be able to uh, let the community and cloud know uh, the professionals that are looking for jobs exactly what it is we're looking for. What days, what hours, what type of clinical situations, what work that we are looking at. And for us as a practice looking for professionals, we get all the gamut of information of each individual we're looking for. So in this example here from their platform, let's say our practice is looking for a new dental assistant. Not only will we be able to see the profile of the, of the potential dental assistant, but we get all of their information. We get their schedule up front. We know exactly what days and what hours they're available. We get to see exactly how many times they've been booked by other practices. How many times did they show up on time? How many times did they either not show or were they late? What is the pay that they are asking for? How long is their commute? How many times do we lose staff because they say, oh, well, my commute's too long. And we think, well, why didn't we know this from the first hand? All of this information and more, we are able to get this information through Cloud's platform. And like I said, whether it is a dental assistant, a hygienist, or even an associate uh, doctor, 
having this type of all in one uh, area is going to be a absolute gold mine for us. It's going to be such a huge find. So we look here at another uh, dentist, we see some of those statistics that we mentioned. And as you can see, that schedule is constantly being refreshed and updated. You'll be able to see how often that individual is signing on to their profile and how active they are. So you'll have an idea, as you can see, last login two minutes ago. So you know this person is motivated, constantly looking to see if he can find a new job. He's been booked 415 times. He has never shown up late or never canceled. All of this stuff is being tracked for us. So this is giving us an invaluable amount of information which then we as an office can also start not only seeing what they've done, but we can look at past offices that they have worked in and see their reviews. Nothing is more frustrating than bringing somebody in and finding out later from another practice, oh my God, they worked in so-and-so's place that I know and they told me they were awful. Well, I wish I knew that up front. Well, with this platform with cloud, we do know that. We can go on their profile, we can see past reviews from different practices they were at, and whether they were good or if they were not, we're going to find all that information out. So again, uh, what this software is providing to us is absolutely priceless. We can then, once we're happy with a potential uh, opportunity of somebody, we can directly send that individual a booking request. We can let them know what day, what times, what we're looking for. We can tell them if we want to have, uh, if the pay that they've requested doesn't match up, what we want to have. And we can now open a direct dialogue with them. And we can send these requests to as many uh, professionals as we want. So unlike going through these different services where you have to pay for each uh, individual person you send out. We're just paying a uh, overall fee for using this software and being part of cloud's overall platform. So it's a win, win, win in all different areas. Uh, these guys have now started to even have automatically created uh, temp posts uh, available as well. So we're really able to do a very hands-off type of full information uh, area. So even if we're not looking at it constantly, we can check in hours later and see the update and see who has come on and who has looked into booking. So whether it's permanent jobs, temporary jobs, whatever it might be, uh, this profile and this platform is really a game changer. Um, <clears throat> they have started to blow up all across the country. Myself being here in Boston in this past year, uh, they've actually grown a significant amount. Their CEO actually happens to be out here in Boston, but their biggest uh, markets, they have huge markets in Southern California, through Texas, in different parts of the country, and they are growing exponentially every single day and every single month. So I encourage all of you uh, to look into their profile. And again, it's, it's the solution that they're going to provide for this HR problem is really going to be a game changer. So build a profile for your practice. Go after whatever type of professionals that you need and take care of this HR problem so we can have a very consistent uh, office team. And that will, of course, directly lead to greater patient confidence and overall better treatment acceptance and production for our practices. So really happy to share cloud with everybody. The next one, which again sounds obvious, but is also overlooked way too much, is the issue of radiographic identification. And we're going to introduce uh, the advent of artificial intelligence as well. But let's first start with radiographic identification. Well, why are we bringing that up? Well, as we all know, our practices are spending thousands of dollars each month on marketing. The goal of marketing is always to try and bring in new patients. And our feeling is always that the more new patients that we bring in, the way the more that we're able to continue to keep our production consistent and create increased amount and maintain our revenue. Well, from dental time, you can see these stats. What has happened is that dental practices on average are, are using about 7% of the revenue on marketing. And therefore we need about 20 to 50 new patients a month to try and kind of keep ourselves uh, on tap. Of course, varying based on the size of practice that you might have. The bottom line though, in this slide, is that we're putting a lot of energy and time and resources into trying to get new patients via marketing. However, one thing that I will argue to you 
and again, this is my stick as a periodontist, is that if we pay a little bit more attention to periodontal disease, you can see that over half, in fact, some studies have shown 80% of our population has some form of periodontal disease. So the, the kind of pushback I always provide is yes, we do need to invest in marketing. And yes, we do need to bring in new patients, of course. However, I look at things in a different angle. I look at the fact and say, if about 80% of our population has some form of periodontal disease, and if you think about your practice and think about how much period treatment that you are actually diagnosing, treatment planning, and treating, I can guarantee you it's not nearly as high. So the irony is that while we're looking for all this marketing, we have this enormous pool of patients sitting within our own practice for free, the patients who are already there, who if we just spent a little bit more time identifying and diagnosing periodontal issues, we would be able to take care of this monthly stress and revenue that we're dealing with all the time. And one of the biggest ways we're going to do that is through this issue of better imaging and identification. So where do I uh, even start with this? Well, take a look at this bite wing, for example. Now, of course, for perio, first thing first is that we need to have a PA, and we're going to talk about that on the next slide. But just taking a look at this bite wing, this is actually from a hygienist colleague of mine who worked in this practice in Utah. And already I can see not only a significant amount of calculus, but areas of bone loss and frication. Well, this hygienist told this uh, practice and patient that they needed to start with some scaling and root planing. And the doctor came in and said, nope, absolutely not. There's nothing wrong with this patient. No scaling should be done. And if that's the way you feel, you should leave the office. And they actually kicked my colleague out of the office. So the long story short is we're not doing a good job of identifying and diagnosing periodontal issues. And a big reason why is because we have this obsession with what we consider updating radiographs, quote unquote, with bite wings and not taking FMXs, not taking updated periapicals. And I'm going to show you various examples of, of what I've seen in my own practices. These are my own patients who were never referred for any type of periodontal disease or periodontal issues, who I happen to look through their radiographs, ask for updated periapicals, and look what we found. You've got this big vertical defect on the mesial of number 30 that was not identified. You take a look here at this bite wing, and what do you see? Probably nothing, but when you take a PA, you see that not only is there a bridge with a natural tooth and an implant, which of course is already a big no-no, but you see another big vertical defect on the mesial of that molar. Look at this other bite wing. Patient has no pain and no symptoms, has been in the practice for years, not referred for anything whatsoever. You take a PA and look at the size of this massive amount of defect. And just to demonstrate uh, what this looks like clinically, I'll show you here some clinical photos just to show you how big these defects are. So these are examples of patients that had no discomfort. They were never referred for any type of periodontal treatment. And the reason these patients went years, years on end without ever being diagnosed is because the only radiographs ever being updated were bite wings. So just taking a periapical radiograph more often is already, I can guarantee you, because I've been dealing with this for too many years, uh, this is already going to bring you a significant amount of more uh, production just from the perio standpoint. Now, the other way we could increase our imaging, of course, is this advent of uh, 3D technology. We all are aware of uh, CT scan technology and what it's capable of doing. And when we talk about CT technology, we have to talk about Prexion. And the reason we have to talk, uh, talk about them is when it comes to image quality, there's simply no other CBCT 3D technology product on the market that comes anywhere close to matching them. So I will give you an idea of what this technology is all about. So when you look at any kind of 3D image, the two things you want to focus on, number one is going to be the size of the focal spot. And the number two thing is going to be the size of the voxel, what's known as the voxel size. So by focal spot, it's talking about image clarity. And by voxel size, it's looking at the overall quality of the image itself. And the long story short is that the smaller that focal and voxel size is, the better imagery that you're going to be getting. And Prexions across the board from all different competitors that are out there has the smallest in every one of these categories. 
So to try and demonstrate what that means, what this focal spot means, take an example of Blu-ray. So in the 80s, of course, we had the VHS cameras. We saw when the DVDs came out, what a huge difference it made in overall quality. Well, the focal spot size on a Prexion CVCT is equivalent to what you see now in these HD Blu-ray quality uh, you know, uh, discs that we watch films on. The voxel size as well, the majority of competitors are going to be uh, in that 0.3 to 0.5 to 0.2 range, which at best is usually around uh, an HD TV. The voxel size of a Prexion CVCT is equivalent to those high definition 4K TVs that you see uh, out on the market. So their image quality is simply better than anything else on the market. They have multiple different CT machines that are out there. The Excelsior is one that I wanna point out for a couple specific reasons. Not only, again, as we mentioned, does this give you the best quality image in terms of uh, focal spot and voxel size, but the reason why this machine is so important for somebody like me as a periodontist or an endodontist or a GP is that we all have different fields of view that we need in order to see our image. So an endodontist is going to need a completely different field of view than somebody like myself as a periodontist or an oral surgeon. So having a unit that can provide all of these different fields of view for each different type of clinical situation that you're treating is very essential. And not many of the uh, 3D machines have four of these different fields of views, even as an option. So that makes a significant amount of difference. Like I said, they have multiple different products. We're not here to go through every material that they have, simply to point out that their image quality is the best they have that uh, 3D uh, viewing in terms of voxel size and, and focal spot, which is the best on the market. You, of course, can still use their machine to take standard 2D panoramic images, of course, with a much higher amount of quality and definition. And the last thing I'm going to mention to them, which should not get overlooked, is the overall technical support. This company is incredible. First of all, you can see that through the course of a year, 93% of any type of issues that come up, the very few amount of support calls that they get through the course of the year are handled directly on the phone. Customer service cannot be overlooked and we all know how difficult that has become post COVID. This company is very unique. You can call them at any time you want and they guaranteed, and I've tested this on multiple different occasions, within two different, within two rings, somebody, a human being is going to pick up the phone and answer your call and give you help. You will not be put on hold. You're not going to be uh, speaking to a machine and going through a whole checklist. A human being is going to pick up your phone. They have uh, these different scanners set up at their factory so they can troubleshoot with you live. They can uh, literally mimic the situation of whatever issue that they have. So they can on the spot with their technicians, figure out whatever issue you're having and get it resolved. And like I said, almost 100% of the time over, uh, over the phone. So the customer service part that you get in addition to the overall quality is what really makes these guys the best in the business and why I would really recommend everybody look into them. Again, without these types of images, we're not gonna be able to identify these problems. Well, what's one better way that we can start understanding these images? And well, that's now thanks to the advent of artificial intelligence. This is something brand new to the dental field and something that is certainly going to be revolutionary and start making a much bigger splash in our industry. And I'm very happy to share uh, some of this incredible technology with our partners at a company known as Pearl. So how does artificial intelligence work? And the best example to try and demonstrate, why do we need it? So a lot of us will look and say, well, I do a great job of diagnosing and identifying different types of lesions, whatever it might be, decay, bone loss, whatever it might be. What do I need artificial intelligence to help me for? Well, it ends up being that amongst our peers, ourselves included, we actually don't do as good of a job as we imagine. And so the way this was demonstrated is they looked at uh, these situations we're going to show you. They looked at 136 dental professionals, our own uh, professional colleagues, and they showed them and this FMX. And what they did in this clinical situation is that they demonstrated this tooth number three. And to these 136 colleagues of ours, they asked them a simple question. 
is there anything wrong in this clinical situation? Yes or no? And if so, what is it? And what do you think the results were? Well, among 136 of our uh, own colleagues, the amount of discrepancy was through the roof. In fact, the di uh, division of opinion was literally divided. Half of our 136 colleagues said that tooth is completely fine. There is no decay. There is no treatment necessary at all. Whereas the other half said that, in fact, there is decay. In fact, 40% of, uh, of the people who said there was decay said that there was going to be recurrent decay, whereas a big portion said there was no recurrent decay. So as you can see, just from that one image, the amount of discrepancy between our own colleagues was quite significant. So then they went one step further. They said, all right, well, let's forget that tooth. Let's, look, let's take a look at tooth number 19 here. And we're going to do things the other way around now. We're going to tell you that on the distal of number 19, there is decay there. So we're telling you right off the bat, there's decay. The question that we're going to ask you this time is, in your practice, in your hands, when you treat this area of decay, what is the total amount of treatment dollars going to cost the patient in your practice? And when we took a look at the results that we got from those 136 colleagues, look at these numbers yet again. One out of four of our colleagues said this is a very small lesion. We can treat this very minimally between uh, $500 at the most. This area is going to be treated and taken care of. 20% of our colleagues said, eh, this is going to require a little bit of work. It's probably going to cost between one and three thousand dollars, and over thirty-seven percent of them said it would cost up to a thousand dollars. So, as again, what we can see and demonstrate through this is that the at the end of the day, whereas we all think, well, we all see things very well and see it the same. The fact of the matter is amongst our own colleagues, the sheer amount of discrepancy of opinion, not only for whether or not there's treatment needed at all or not, but how much it might cost, that discrepancy is actually quite vast. So in this FMX, we had clinicians that said they could treat this patient from start to finish for only $300. And we even had a doctor in this group that said it would cost $36,000. And the bottom line take home message is that the amount of diagnostic concurrence amongst our colleagues was less than 50%. That number is shocking. So this is where artificial intelligence is going to step in and give us a hand. How does it work? Well, as it turns out, uh, the human eye is only able to see a certain amount of shades of gray. So the, the human eye can only see between 30 to 50 shades of gray. Now, whether or not that's why they named the movie that, I don't know, but that's a different topic. But whereas the human eye can only see between 30 and 50 different shades, the platform of AI, the computers can see between 550 up to 750 different shades of gray. So looking at radiographs, which of course are varying shades of gray, to be able to have a technology that is able to see literally hundreds of more shades is going to help identify these areas more clearly and help reduce that over 50% of lack of concurrence. So Pearl has a innovative and incredible platform that I use daily myself and I'm awed by every time I use it. Their platform very cleverly called is known as Second Opinion. So the reason this is very important to point out is because no, everybody should not be scared. The machines are not here to take over. The job of artificial intelligence is not to replace the actual doctor and do the job for us. It's not to diagnose for us. It is simply there to identify potential lesions and potential areas of treatment so that we can then take a look at that and determine what or if treatment is needed. So what this second opinion technology is able to do is absolutely jaw opening. You look at th things like decay, for example, not only will it identify decay, but it will also break down the amount of the decay, how much is in dentin and how much is in enamel. You can see bone loss to the hundredth of a millimeter. And when you look at an entire FMX view 
of a patient, you'll be able to identify which specific films uh, have been found to have different types of various different lesions and to be able to identify. So this artificial intelligence, look at all the things, in, including more than that, that is able to point out widened PDL spaces, potential periapical radiolucency, impactions, restorations, open margins, bone loss, decay, again, you name it, and it is able to identify this. So why this becomes so important to us? Think about us through our day. As we all know, our schedules are packed. We are hopping room to room. We know what it's like when we have to jump into a room to do a what we call a quote unquote, a quick hygiene check. We're jumping in the room, we're saying, hey, how's everything going? Is everything good? We're jumping in there, we're maybe taking a very brief look at the radiographs and off we go. Well, of course, we're simply going to miss things. Not because we're not good clinicians, but because we're rushed, we're stressed, and we're doing too many things at once. Well, imagine having artificial intelligence, which before the patient has even been sat down in the chair, has already pointed out all these potential areas of work and potential areas of, no, of notability for us. So when we go into the room, we have already gotten all this information and we already know what to look for. So when we look at our platform and we look at our office schedule for the day, we can see every patient that is going to be on the schedule and we can see how many potential opportunities have come up, how many potential scaling and root planning uh, areas have been identified, how many possible implant areas, how many restorative areas due to decay or open margins will be there. So imagine having this tool before you even start your day to be able to know who needs updated radiographs and who has uh, these lesions. Not only does this save us a tremendous amount of time, but now this opens the door for us to identify a lot more work that again, in the fog of our day and seeing 20 patients and running around like crazy, it's taking care of this work for us. The other thing that is great about the practice intelligence software is that not only are we simply able to identify more disease, but this is something that works for every team member in your office. So your hygienist is going to be able to use it to be able to identify things to point out to you. But even our front desk, through the staffing and through the software, it is actually going to keep track of practice management in terms of revenue. How many quads of scaling of root planning have been planned? How many of them have actually been completed? How many of them are due? If a patient cancels for a day, who has signed up for treatment but not actually come in? Who needs to have other work done? All of these types of questions are going to be provided even for the front desk. So every team member from the front desk all the way to the back can utilize this software in different ways. And therefore they can maximize the day to make sure things are getting scheduled properly. Us as the practicing clinicians can identify these areas and again, treat them better and just do a better job of uh, diagnosing and detecting these potential areas. As mentioned, this uh, uh, software has been FDA cleared. It has more FDA clearance than any of the other uh, AI programs that are out there that are coming onto the market. Uh, so again, this is something that is really revolutionary. It works on the majority of types of software that exist in your existing office. Uh, so your existing radiographs will get uploaded into the artificial intelligence and automatically be there for you. Every new radiograph that you take will also automatically uh, be converted on their uh, software by the AI. So you'll be receiving, again, instantaneous feedback and be able to do things right away. So what artificial intelligence has done is really mind boggling. And I think it's just gonna be getting better with time. Uh, so stay tuned and really uh, take a look at what Pearl is able to provide to us. Last two areas that we're gonna have time for is we're gonna talk about some clinical solutions and again, patient financing. Now, there are a lot of different uh, clinical solutions that are out there. One that I'm really happy to share with everybody is something that benefits everybody and is so easy to implement and will do a tremendous job because it has not only no overhead, but the outcomes that it provides for our patients has not uh, cannot be underestimated. And that is a product known as Perio Protect. This has literally changed so much of the way that I not only treat uh, phase one therapy, but phase two and also phase three maintenance along with implants. So I'm really happy to share 
what this product is and how it works. Well, the basis of this is pretty simple. As we know, we've already identified the sheer amount of periodontal disease out there and the fact that we're not identifying it. But let's say we have the situation where we have identified a patient with periodontal disease. Well, as we know, there is no way through regular brushing and flossing that they are able to get to the base of that pocket. So now we're left in these situations where even with scaling and root planing, we're not having as much success and we may be talking about phase two therapy. But what I can tell you again as a practicing periodontist is as soon as I start mentioning words like osseous and surgery and other type of phase two therapy, our patients who are already anxious to see us as we identified in the very first slide, we start losing them and they start panicking. Well, we have this solution through PerioProtect which is a game changer in phase one, phase two, and phase three maintenance therapy. And the way it works is that it is a deep tray delivery system. And the primary uh, product, the primary chemical that's doing the work is a patented and specifically trademarked uh, formula by PerioProtect of 1.7% hydrogen peroxide. Now, why that is unique is that this 1.7% peroxide is able to not only act as an oral debriding agent, it actually kills and uh, wipes away biofilm. At the same time, it is able to debride the bacterial cell wall, knock out gram-negative bacteria. And when you break down hydrogen peroxide, one of the byproducts is going to be oxygen. So not only are you killing all the bad bacteria within that pocket, but you are now through the healing process actually introducing oxygen during this breakdown. So it is not only helping to clean, but it is helping to repair. So as we mentioned, it is a deep tray delivery device. So when you take a look at this photo, you think to yourself, well, this just looks like a night guard or a suck down that I can make at the office. Well, what's unique about this deep tray, they have a patented design. And what this does is it, it creates a hermetic seal. And what we mean by that is that when the patient puts that gel within those trays and puts those trays on, if you do not have a hermetic seal around those trays, if we were to, for example, use a regular over-the-counter suck down, you put that gel within the patient's mouth and the gel is literally going to come out the sides and not be effective. It's not going to go anywhere. But due to this deep tray hermetic seal delivery through physics, that uh, peroxide is actually going to get pushed underneath the gums and into that periodontal pocket. In fact, and they have scientific studies to prove this, this gel through this deep tray delivery is capable of reaching nine millimeters below the gingival margin. Again, I repeat, nine millimeters. So imagine peri-implantitis or peri-mucositis patients. Imagine patients that are periodontally involved and have these pockets. Well, imagine having these trays that are such a low hanging fruit for our patients. Why? Because there's no overhead for the practice. All we have to do is take an alginate impression, or if you have scanning technology in your practice, you can scan both arches, send it to PerioProtect. They will send you this gel and their tray, and the patient will able, be able to move forward. And again, by wearing it, you will see that peroxide gel go into that periodontal pocket. And now we've got this solution that is not only wiping away and killing all the bad bacteria, it is therefore, as a result of it, reducing and eliminating bleeding on probing, which is getting rid of inflammation. It is creating a massive amount of pocket reduction, a massive amount of decrease in overall redness and inflammation. And the beauty of this product is that the patient only needs to wear this for 10 to 15 minutes a day in order for it to be effective. That is how long it takes for that peroxide to be able to properly kill off that gram-negative bacteria. So like I mentioned, for patients that are anxious, for patients that don't want to move forward right away with surgery, or with patients that have a high amount of calculus, this will actually debride the calculus. For patients that are coming for implant maintenance that we want to help uh, prevent peri-implantitis or that are starting to show signs of perimucositis. There are so many different uses of this tray through phase one, phase two, and phase three that can all be done. And these trays will move forward and carry on with the patient from a maintenance standpoint. 
So patients that are candidates, anybody from maintenance and overall implant care, pre or post surgery, again, patients that are anxious, this is a game changer in terms of gaining confidence and gaining clinically uh, noticeable improvements, medically compromised patients as well, and those who complain of either bad breath or have this disquamative gingivitis. This has been a game changer. The proof is in the pudding. You will see that using this product will get you a reduction on bleeding on probing, not only over the short run, but over the long run as well, which is the name of the game. And again, that through that 10 minute period of time, that peroxide is able to kill off that gram negative bacteria and create a healthy environment, as you can see, uh, going from that green to that red in the scanning electron micrographs. So everybody wins, the patient wins, the practice wins, there's no overhead. It's low cost. The patient is able to take that with them. They only wear it for 10 to 12 minutes a day. I have patients that wear it when they're in the shower. I have patients that wear it when they're watching uh, television at night, if they're watching Jeopardy. So we get an increased amount of trust in patient retention, uh, much better results. So again, in terms of a treatment uh, acceptance type of product, this will revolutionize your practice. The other reason it's so important, we're throwing antibiotics at problems way too much. This is a recent stat, antibiotic resistant bacteria now are killing somebody in the country every 15 minutes. So again, to be able to provide a solution like this without throwing antibiotics is huge. They are the only deep delivery device approved by the FDA. So they have all the backing you can possibly need. Just to show you a clinical example, this is a patient of mine that over 20 years in the practice that he was coming, all of his rounds of scaling and root planing, that mandibular anterior gingival was always red. He has great impeccable home care, but no matter what he does, he always gets bleeding when he brushes and flossing his teeth, no matter what he has done. You can see here on the side that redness. We simply had him wear these protect trays for a few weeks. When the patient came back, he was in awe. He said for the very first time in over 20 years, the redness is gone. His tissue is all pink. He has no more bleeding when he flosses or brushes his teeth. His mouth feels fresher. Every patient I have on this says they have uh, a fresher mouth and they feel like their mouth is cleaner because of course it is. That gram negative bacteria is getting wiped out. From Dr. Harasti, he showed us this uh, periimplantitis case which after rounds of laser wasn't improving, he started including the perio -tray therapy as well. And he saw a much improved reduction on bleeding and overall implant management. I'm now starting to implement this as a long-term implant maintenance. We all know how much harder it is to clean and maintain implants due to that uh, abutment uh, and tooth interface. So again, to put these patients on these trays, they invest so much money on these implants. Why not give them a very in inexpensive and easy solution to help them maintain it? So again, something really great and hopefully everybody could look into. Our final category that we're going to look at uh, for tonight is going to issue, is going to talk about this issue of patient financing. So we started off our uh, lecture talking about the patient concerns. And as we all pointed out, so many of our patients at the end of the day, they want to do the work, but if their insurance doesn't cover it and or they simply don't have the money, they're not going to do it. Well, things have changed quite a bit, and I'm happy to introduce not one, but two different companies that now provide patient financing solutions for us that can really revolutionize our overall amount of treatment acceptance. And those are Sunbit and Cherry. So as we all know, our traditional financing lenders that we've been using for years, Care Credit, of course, is the behemoth that everybody knows, Lending Club as well. But as we know from both of these companies, we run into issues. Well, first of all, our case acceptance overall is only 50 to 60% for established patients. And those numbers are even lower for new patients. And these stats are from dental economics. And again, the big reason why is because these traditional lenders like Care Credit are only giving approval for patients that have high credit scores. So if you happen to have a mediocre and of course a lower credit score, you're getting denied. So the stats have proven that over 60% of our patients that actually want to have treatment done, but that go and apply are getting denied because of their overall credit score. And as a result, you can imagine how much missed opportunity that is for us. There's nothing more frustrating than having a big case that a patient actually wants to do the work, 
but is not moving forward because they're not getting financing. Well, these two solutions are now stepping in to fill that gap. What Sunbit, for example, is able to do is that they start looking at those average and even lower credit score patients and eight and a half out of 10 of those average to low credit score patients, they are actually approving. So those patients that were all getting denied by those traditional vendors are actually getting approved. As a result of that, of course, that leads to a tremendous amount of production for our practices because now our patients are applying and getting approved for financing. So this is great. The other thing that makes Sunbit incredible, the process literally takes less than 30 seconds. I tested it myself. It took 10 seconds. I'm going to show you how it works in a moment. Also, there are no hard credit checks that are done. So when somebody applies for financing through their software, there is a soft check only. Their credit score is not going to be touched at all. There are no chargebacks. And like I said, the process is rapid. Here's what we do. They will supply for your practice an iPad. On that iPad, you will get your patient's driver's license, scan the back of it, and instantly, within a few seconds, their information will show up along with the amount that they can be approved for. So we will put in, hey, we've got this $5,000 case. They will apply for that financing. And again, within that 30 second period, not only will they see if they've been approved, which again, we're getting that high amount, but it will also provide them the payment plan if they want to break it up over a long period of time, along with the interest numbers. So it is incredible what it's able to do. Now, the last thing I'll point out for them is if, our, if the patient happens to abandon the practice they take the responsibility on themselves. So they aren't going to make you eat the cost. They're not going to come back to the practice and say, hey, sorry, it's on you. They're going to say, hey, we took on this financing for this patient. If that patient vanishes, we're taking that responsibility. This is huge. <clears throat> Similarly, Cherry is providing a similar type of product and software. They are equally getting an increased amount of uh, approvals in a significantly amount quicker time. And the interest that they're able to provide in terms of fee, depending on the range of that patient's credit scores, is significantly cheaper than the other options that are out there. Their product works a little different than uh, Sunbit. Sunbit will provide you an iPad and you will do it in office. Cherry does it through uh, an, <clears throat> a website they have on your computer. So you will literally sign on to their website, input the patient's information, and you will receive all of uh, their clearance and their financing information through that software on that website. So it is just a single website, still very quick to do. Again, you take in terms of the approval rates, uh, the, the interest rates that they have for both prime and non-prime uh, patients, the promotion periods and the maximum loan amounts, they will approve up to $25,000 treatment plans. So to be able to have our patients that have these giant amount of treatments that before were being denied and they're therefore saying, sorry, I'm going home, I'm not going to do the treatment, to now have this as a possibility is an absolute game changer for us. And in terms of overall treatment acceptance and productivity cannot be denied. So Again, I went as fast as I could. I, I'm sorry if I had to race, but again, we, we have so much info that we cover over three hours. I wanted to get to the most important highlights that I could within this time and leave some time for extra questionings and conclusions. Keep in mind, again, patient and practice factors play a significant role in treatment acceptance. We have to gain the patient's trust, but be present, guys. If somebody's not picking up the phone when a new patient wants to join us, and we don't have a team that is consistent that they see the same face and they have a good rapport with that trust and our overall ability to get uh, our ability to get acceptance is going to obviously plummet we've shown how proper imaging through simply taking pas by itself can make a huge difference and save you thousands in marketing and increase your production and in addition to that uh, with new 3D CT technology and the advent of artificial intelligence, we now have uh, great solutions for that as well. Non-surgically, we've got that great solution through Perio Protect, which is a no overhead, uh, you know, patient confidence gainer, which is easy and has huge results. And again, thanks to these new patient financing platforms, we can now take situations where we have to tell the patient, sorry, 
uh, you're not getting approved and the patient says, sorry, bye-bye, I'm leaving, to now being a yes and being something that is possible uh, and can be done. So uh, finishing just on time to provide time for questions. Again, from the city of Boston, I thank everybody for joining in a very detailed uh, webinar in a very short period of time. Uh, I would love to keep in touch with everybody. So I'm leaving here my little uh, barcode on the right side of the screen. If anybody would like, uh, please scan that uh, and follow me on social media. Uh, my website is there as well. Uh, I hope to answer any of your questions. I'll stick around as long as you need. Uh, and I hope I can uh, connect with everybody and I hope everybody learned something new on this webinar. Thanks so much for tuning in. So some questions to answer here. A couple questions in terms of uh, Pearl and, and how does it work and who do they contact? Uh, Lisa will be able to provide some of the uh, contacts for the sponsors directly. So you'll be able to get in touch with them about their software and, you know, getting pricing information. Same thing with Perio Protect as well. Um, they will break down for you what they'll have in terms of promotions and, you know, paying monthly. I can tell you the process for them again. Um, they're going to take all your prior radiographs and over a couple period, uh, a couple week period of time, they will convert all your prior radiographs into the new uh, software. So you will have access to all of those and all of your new ones, of course, as you take them uh, are going to be instantaneously uploaded. So that's one uh, question for Perio Protect. Uh, this is not something insurance based. Uh, as far as a code, you could use the uh, ADA code for a miscellaneous procedure. Typical fee, the beauty of it is that you set the fee. Uh, again, you will have to speak with the company specifically, but I want to say the trays uh, from a material cost uh, cost about $150 for upper and lower combined, so for both. But as far as what you set as a fee for your patients, that is completely up to you. I've seen practices that charge patients 500. I've seen offices that charge 700. I've seen them charge up to 1,000. So that is completely um, up to yours, uh, up to your uh, you know, discretion. Another question comparing other products to Perio Protect. Uh, you know, what I've seen with that has been better than any other product I've tried uh, in terms of a patient take-home device. Um, there is another product in terms of biofilm removal, which I also believe very strongly in, uh, known as Hybenex. Uh, it's an entirely kind of different process to it. I just mentioned the name. Again, we'll be talking about it more in, in future courses. But in terms of something a patient can take home with them, easy to use, use at home over a day-to-day -day basis. Again, uh, that, that is a real uh, game changer and makes uh, you know, the biggest difference out of anything that I've seen. 